Hi there, it's Sue, and you're listening to a special 12-part series of Maker to Master, Find and Fix What's Not Working in Your Small Business. This is part eight. Given that many of us are sequestered at home right now, I wanted to do something to balance out the pull to watching the news over and over again. The best thing we can do right now is stay healthy, mentally and physically. That means being active. Go outside for a walk each day, lift weights, or get on your home bike, and think about how you can use this newfound time to be productive. Wouldn't it be great to come out of these times stronger in mind, body, and business? Towards that end, here are a few chapters of my book. Listen to all 12 episodes to hear it in its entirety. On Mondays, I'm sticking with our regular podcast, and then on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you'll get these special editions. If you'd like to purchase a hard copy, you can do so on Amazon or at giftbizunwrapped.com. Are you discouraged because your business right now isn't performing as you envisioned? Do you tell people everything is wonderful when inside your stomach is churning because you know it's not true? This book will help you identify where the holes are in your business and show you exactly how to fix them. You'll learn from owners just like you who are seeing real success, growing their companies, and living their dream. In this book, find out how to confirm your business is set up correctly to provide the foundation for growth how to implement pricing strategies that bring in sales and make you money, how to effortlessly attract new customers every day, and balance the making of your product with the running of your business. And finally, you'll discover how to ensure that your business stays open and grows over time. Let's get right to it, shall we? Chapter 33 Let's be social. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and on and on. By the time you're reading this, who knows what new platform will appear. Like it or not, social media is here to stay. It presents the ability for us to reach out and be seen like never before. The power comes in its worldwide access, where once you are limited to customers in your local area, or the subscribership of a newspaper, today you can do business almost anywhere. It's even more useful in the ability to narrow down to your specific audience and to speak to them directly. There are also communities that have formed within the whole. Facebook groups, hashtag hubs, and Twitter chats exist where people gather online and talk. Many of these communities are free to join, and the conversations are detailed and helpful because they pertain specifically to the topic of the group. If you're looking for a group to join to see what this is all about, jump over to my free Facebook group at Gift Biz Breeze. Help centers are also set up within Facebook. Companies provide clients a place to go when they need help or other types of assistance. At the Ribbon Print Company, We have a private Facebook group for the owners of our systems. It is an active place with photos being shared, questions asked, successes celebrated, and friendships made. Since it's a private group, there are things discussed that only those in the group can see. This allows for an elevated level of trust and camaraderie. If someone's having trouble with a customer, they can present the problem there. If someone is unclear on how they should price a job, they'll hear from others who share what they do. And it's a resource if they are having difficulty running the printer. Help is there from fellow system owners as well as our customer service team. Check out groups for your industry or groups around a special product that you use. You may have to request to join and answer a few questions to get in. But once inside, you'll find a community of people with detailed conversations worth your time. If it's not the right group for you, or it's a spammy group with everyone selling their stuff, leave and go find another group. Or maybe you want to start a group of your own. Information abounds about all the different social media channels, along with strategies and how best to get results from each one. Here are top-line best practices that transcend individual sites. They are important when you want to see positive results, regardless of the platform. 1. Open a business account. 
If you are using social media for business, you need a business account where it is offered. In most cases, having a business account is the only way to see statistics or to run ads. Again, things change so fast, who knows what else might apply only to business accounts at the time you're reading this. Two, start with two platforms. If you are opening your business now, pick one or two platforms to get started. They should be the ones your ideal customer, your avatar, is using so you can get in front of them. Most likely it will be Facebook and one other. It's easy to get swayed into thinking you are missing something if you aren't on the latest platform that appears. Don't succumb to the idea that you have to be on all social media platforms right away. Or ever. 2. Define your strategy. Each social media platform has its own unique strength and audience. Therefore, your business goals should vary too. Determine what you expect from your participation on each site. Then watch your stats to see if your posting schedule and content are actually producing those results. Three, word your posts for your audience. Remember to speak to your ideal customer when creating the wording on your posts. Many people get confused here. They direct their photos and wording to friends, peers, or to appease their ego. Ask yourself what your ideal customer would want to see. What is it that will deepen their relationship with you and your business? This is what you post. For more information on this, go back and review the examples in the Hi, I Know You section. One final comment here on social media. Please don't make the mistake of thinking an account on Facebook or Pinterest can replace a website of your own. Because you don't own social media platforms, you don't have access to details about your followers or your subscribers. If any platform changes their rules or goes away, you are left without the ability to contact those customers or prospects. All the work you put forth would be for nothing. We talk about how to protect yourself from this in the I want to know you section. The primary purpose of social media platforms is to attract and serve your customers. Yes, you can sell there too, but if you don't provide content that they value, they'll leave. Chapter 34, A Coffee Chat. One of the most intimidating things about networking is the dreaded elevator speech. This is where you get up in front of a room of people and introduce yourself and your business. Scary. I completely get it. But no need to worry. I've got you covered. It does not have to be hard when you know what to say. Most people make the mistake of trying to cover every little thing about their business in this 30-second time allotment. Who cares about the address of your store? Tell me something that will pique my curiosity and make me want to find out more. Let's talk about how to do this properly. To start, the elevator speech needs a new name. I call it the introduction message. Whew, that doesn't sound so hard, does it? You want to cover some very basic information in your introduction message so people understand what you do. If it interests them, they will want to find out more. That's when they catch up with you after the meeting and start up a conversation. I want you to follow a strategy I first heard from Amy Porterfield, someone I respect for her business savvy. She says, start simple, get fancy later. So let's start simple, and I'll give you exactly what to say for your introduction message. In fact, I've made it into a template. Just fill in your information, and you're good to go. Also, it's okay if you want to actually write it down and read from a piece of paper as you get going. Listen, all of us have been in the same spot and can remember when we did our first public introduction. We can relate. It's actually endearing to see someone step out of their comfort zone and take a risk. Trust me, you'll gain friends, not turn people away. Here's your introduction template. Hi, I'm, and then you fill in your name, owner of your company. I help and this is where you put in your customer description, two, and then you add the result of your product or service. That's it. That's all you need to say. 
again, as you get more comfortable and this slides off your tongue, you can add to it and fancy it up. If you want more information on how to network with ease, check out how to get my Networking Ninja course for free. Details are in the resources section of this book. Chapter 35, Once Upon a Time. I'm wondering if you're like me. I have so much trouble remembering names. Two seconds after I meet someone, I forget their name. So embarrassing. I've tried listening harder, repeating their name, everything, nothing works. Until I heard about a different system. Now, when I meet someone, I find something to relate to their name. I look for a differentiating physical trait or pick up something in a conversation we've had and use that to remember their name. For example, when I first met Carly, I remembered her by associating it with her super curly hair. So curly equals Carly. When I first met Bob, I remembered him because of his rather large nose. So beak equals Bob. Gail wears crazy looking glasses. Jackie has just one beauty mark on her face. And Mary is really good at math. She's an accountant, by the way. I use these associations for names because it works. Now I can acknowledge people by name when I see them again. Wouldn't it be fabulous if you could use a similar strategy in reverse? What if you could ensure that people remember you? This is possible through the power of telling stories. Learning and using stories can be a game changer for your business. When you tell a story, you've given people something not only to remember you by, but also content to talk about when referencing you or your company. You can use stories when you mingle at networking meetings, in creating posts for social media, or when building rapport before presenting to a corporate client. Now, I'm not talking about a story that goes on forever with side branches that lead to nowhere. I'm talking about glimpses into your life, your company, or you as a person. It's so much better than the, good morning, how are you? Fine, thank you, and you? Doing well. This is bland banter that goes absolutely nowhere. What if this encounter went something like this? Good morning, how are you doing today? Great, my daughter's in town and we had dinner last night at Bluegrass. I love that restaurant. Have you ever been? Of course, I love their Louisiana blackened grouper. Oh my gosh, that's exactly what I had last night. So good. See the difference? The little dinner story was short and sweet, but it added personality and some friendly give and take to the conversation. From there, the chat can go elsewhere in a very comfortable way. I often take my customers to Bluegrass when we celebrate a milestone. Oh, really? What do you do, by the way? And on and on. How different could your relationships be if they could get to this level of conversation? We miss so many opportunities with people we are around every day because we stay on the surface with boring, expected verbal exchanges. An important note here. People will like and remember you for stories and things that have nothing to do with your business, too. Don't be shy or think it's out of context to sprinkle in personal information. That's what makes you human. We want to do business with people we are comfortable with and who we like. Stories make that happen. Chapter 36. Capture the Moment. There is nothing more powerful than word of mouth. Once a friend tells you about her favorite handyman or the world's best dog groomer, do you even need to look further? The reason referrals are so valuable is because the sale is almost already made. Referred prospects come to you with a favorable impression from the start. Your only job is to get them over the finish line. So why do we struggle so much with asking for referrals? I know I do. I think it's because I feel like I'm stepping over the invisible boundary of the customer relationship. But I've found ways to get beyond that. 1. Set up a formal system. Create a referral system where the customer is rewarded for bringing other business your way. Many businesses are doing this these days, so it's the easiest of all programs to institute. People are familiar and comfortable with the idea. 
but make sure you remind your customers that the system exists. It's easy for them to forget about this option. You can add a sentence to the bottom of an email, include it on a customized sales receipt, or print up a flyer that you can include in their bag when they purchase. These are all ways to reinforce a referral program. Two, capture in the moment. You can collect referrals directly or indirectly in the way of testimonials. If you are at a trade show, for example, and someone says something complimentary about your product, see if you can document it from your phone. Many times the hardest thing about testimonials is the wording. But after someone has already provided the words, you can play off of that. A video testimonial is best, but even if they only let you use their words attached to their name, you're set. Bingo, a new testimonial is done within a couple of minutes. Three, ask. I'll admit it, I'm not so good at this as I could be, but I'm working on it. Once someone becomes a long-term and supportive client, I ask them if they know anybody else who could benefit from the product or service we offer. At this point, I feel like I'm at a level in the relationship where it won't jeopardize anything if I ask. Some training programs suggest that you do this right after the sale. It may work, but I think it needs to happen a little further down the road. That's when the relationship is solid and the client has had an opportunity to experience what your product or service has to offer. No matter which one of these you put in place or you create your own, make sure to take advantage of all the power referrals provide. Chapter 37, Power Up. Power Partners, a golden opportunity that few people know about or take advantage of. I'm so excited to share this with you because it has such great potential for bringing in sales. Let me back up. A power partner is a complementary business that has a similar customer avatar, but sells something different. Here are some examples. A dog trainer and the owner of a kennel a home organizer and a residential realtor, a florist and a wedding photographer. The value comes in working together and sharing each other's customers in a way that both participants benefit. It's not just a win-win, it's a win-win-win. Each company gets visibility with new customers, and the customer wins by being introduced to new services that they may need. Here are some examples of ways power partners can work together. One, combine products together and sell in two locations. Let's take a chocolate shop and a jeweler. For Valentine's Day, they could work together to create a limited time product. It could include a chocolate truffle box and an I love you charm necklace. They are packaged as one gift with a big red bow and have a predominant display in each shop. The business owners determine the appropriate compensation division. No matter where a purchase is made, they split all sales according to that agreement. Two, service product combo. A hair salon could power partner with a hair accessories company. There could be a weekend event in the salon demonstrating how to use the accessories. They could also teach customers right there how they can do it themselves. Not only would people purchase for themselves, but they may tell their friends to go in and check it out. This could work really well around the holidays or a high school dance. Who can resist glamming up their hair for these special events? If they have the hair products needed and know how to do it, that is. Three, service packages. Combine services that are required to meet a common goal. The power partner concept does not need to be limited to only two companies. In planning that once-in-a-lifetime wedding, think of all the potential services involved. An event planner, florist, photographer, caterer, stationery store, DJ, videographer, hotel and limousine service, all are possible power partners. Again, the idea is that your customers are the same, but what you provide is different. This is why it works so well. You are not infringing or taking business from one another. You are enhancing each other's businesses. That's a wrap for this session of Maker to Master, and I look forward to sharing the rest of the book with you in upcoming episodes. 
I want to make sure you're familiar with my free Facebook group called Gift Biz Breeze. It's a place where we all gather and are a community to support each other. I've got a really fun post in there that's my favorite of the week, I have to say, where I invite all of you to share what you're doing, to show pictures of your product, to show what you're working on for the week, to get reaction from other people, and just for fun because we all get to see the wonderful products that everybody in the community is making my favorite post every single week, without doubt. Wait, what? Aren't you part of the group already? If not, make sure to jump over to Facebook and search for the group Gift Biz Breeze. Don't delay. Come join us in Gift Biz Breeze. Today, 